there there's not one thing we can blame in this game. We can't we we could blame it on Freddy. We could blame like it on Baker. A, it's been like that for the past decade. There's it, never it, just one thing. <laughs> there's never just one thing you can blame. What's up, everybody? That's Kellen Conley. And that's Anthony Sellers. And this is... Browns, Browns in Our Blood. Blood. Well, here we are. The Browns went to Arizona on Sunday. Got it right. I got it right this time. And they fall 38-24. to Anthony, what are your thoughts on that game? All I could think about was if the Cardinals were able to do that with the same kind of offense as the Ravens, what are the Ravens going to do to us? <laughs> That's all I kept thinking about. It was so bad. like the, They couldn't keep contained. But then again, it's like the offensive line is not – or defensive line, I'm sorry. That defensive line is not the defensive line we were expecting to have the whole year. So it's like when you're playing players that literally are – Backups. Probably, yeah, backups or borderline roster players. Anyways, you know, they're fighting for roster spots on most any other team. So, I, I, I just... I feel like they left the defense in Cleveland. Uh, I feel like they left a lot. They Cleveland. left a lot in Cleveland. Uh, Kenyon Drake went nuts. <laughs> 137 yards and how many touchdowns? Too many. Yeah. Um, Kyler Murray, 19 for 25. He only missed six passes. Uh, Baker threw an uh, interception. Um, the former Cardinal, y'all's uh, backup tight end, Seals Jones, he had a fumble, costly fumble for y'all. And Joku missed an awful block. Like, he was there, and then he wasn't. And then Baker got sacked. What the game <sighs> showed is where the problems lie. It really magnified the weaknesses, in my opinion. It magnified what you are good guys are good at, which is running the ball. But it, it, it magnifies the weaknesses too, because like it yeah. still mag- it, yeah. like it magnified that we you don't have a defensive lo- or offensive tackles either. You know, you don't have depth on the defensive line. Mm-hmm. You don't have Y'all really are missing depth. miles. Yeah. Yeah. You don't you just don't have depth. You don't have discipline you know like there's just so much stuff that it magnified that just reared its head again throughout this game and i i was i was watching and the game seemed close like in the first especially in the first half and i was like okay they're within striking distance but that third quarter man they just kind of opened it up and i mean it was only 28 17 i mean that's still doable but then the miss field goal hurt you guys siebert couldn't put it through and Every time it seemed like, and this is the story of the whole season, the Browns have opportunities, and they just constantly squander the opportunities. And, like, the the interception, Baker overthrew Odell, clearly. Yeah. And, I mean, that's the play that y'all have to make. To This is the connection we've been talking about all year. This is the reason Odell's in Cleveland, to make those touchdown catches. And Odell had a drop, too, that I saw. And then to just see them constantly not capitalize other than Chubb just running his ass off. It's just so frustrating. And then Chubb only got 17 touches. Yeah, and then Hunt, too. Like, yeah. Hunt on Monday called him out, basically saying that it was seen. And you kind of noticed that there was one play. I'm pretty sure it was in the third quarter, too. One play where Jarvis, did he motioned from the right over to the left mm-hmm. and he did it in his slow pace at normal but there like he kind of like got to the end where it was just like a petty walk and I just thought that was the first time I, I really thought it was like he's not going to give it his all on this play and he he kind of half ass broke out of his break too I, and stuff and it was just you know you see it and then they call that stuff out later in the week you know yeah and it's like yeah it makes sense it, it's it's just maddening because 
the the Cardinals. This is the Cardinals team that I was afraid would show up. The one that puts up all the points, and no one knew Kenyon Drake was going to do that. I mean, no. the Cardinals have like a three back attack pretty much, and Kenyon Drake was just unstoppable. And then Kirk was getting all the first downs they needed. Fitzgerald was in there. Like any anybody that needed to step up for the Cardinals did, and anybody who could have stepped up for the Browns just completely didn't. Did it, yeah. And this team is just in complete disarray. I was hoping for a winning season last last week. Now we're hoping for 500. Yeah, and, and all it did was magnify all the other crap that the media wanted to talk about. Of course. Which you don't really... More cannon yeah, fodder. Yeah, don't want to... Which you don't want to dwell on, but it's like... Yeah. How the hell can you not dwell on it when that stuff is constantly being brought up and then you turn around and have performances like that, so... But on positive notes, Jarvis and Nick Chubb are going to the Pro Bowl. So congratulations, let's fellas! Give, give props to those. Nothing for Joe uh, Schobert, though. Even though, even though I just called out Jarvis, Jarvis for not running hard on <laughs> one play. Yeah, take back his Pro Bowl selection. No, no. But I mean, he, they're <laughs> both of them. Good. Yeah, both of them are deserving of it, of the recognition overall throughout the whole yeah. course of the season. And like you said, Schobert too. I think should have made it. But I, I agree. I think Schobert's had a phenomenal year. Um, so it, it's good to get the personal recognition, but there, there's not one thing we can blame in this game. We can't. We we could blame it on Freddie. We could blame like it on Baker. A, it's been like that for the past decade. There's it, never it, just one. Thing, <laughs> there's never just one thing you can blame. It's always yeah. a mag, like a combination of the players, the coaches, and the front office mm-hmm. just doing their own part this past decade to just make it all terrible. And that's is like. The microcosm of this season just culminating in that. I mean, I mean, there's media's calling for Baker to lose his endorsements because uh, they were a distraction this season, and and he's not the same quarterback. And we don't know if Baker is the future of the franchise. And I don't. And maybe even some fans are feeling that way about Baker. And I know that nobody loves Freddie at this point. Um, I. It, I don't want to keep dwelling on it, man. Yeah, there's a Twitter thing, the thread that I found, that if I remember it, I'll try to post it into the description. Mm -hmm. It's a really, really, it's really long, so it should be. Good Twitter threads are long. No, this one should be like a freaking article. It was literally like, it was literally like a thousand, fifteen hundred word article. Damn, like. He should have just done it. 50 tweets, huh? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was ridiculous, but it really talks about all that stuff, and I think it's a great should read and synopsis of everything. Yeah, uh, exactly. <clears throat> synopsis of the whole whole season and puts into perspective everything about moving forward too, about what to do moving forward. It kind of puts puts other things into perspective. Like if you do that, this is going to basically be kind of like the third offense that Baker's learning because you know you had what he learned under Hugh Jackson, and then you had the changes that were made mid season. Like granted, they weren't like a, it wasn't a full playbook that would have been changed, but there were. Stuff that they adapted and changed to, yeah, and that course. you saw the second half of last season, and then the stuff for this season that got changed up, and then you know, so it would be basically doing another scheme if you move forward, a rehaul, or, yeah, another rehaul. overhaul, That's yeah, what and it and it'd be the same way with this uh, offensive game plans and system stuff. It'd be a whole new system to learn and things like that. So and then another, do you year really want to? Yeah, do you really want to do that or? You know, push for something different. I mean, granted, some of these mistakes, yes, we've all been critical. Everybody has been critical and on about Freddie. I've done it. You've done it. Eric's done it. Eric's even done it. It's yeah. continued disappointment is yeah. what it is. And, I mean, we, we keep expecting the Browns to go into these winnable games and hoping they come out with W, and then when it doesn't happen, it's not... It'd be different if they played hard and it's like they were right there. Because there was last season, there was several games where it's like they played hard, they're right there, but they lost. Okay, that's positive progress. There's progress, yeah. and every time they take a loss this season, it just feels like 18 steps back. And the penalties, yeah, like it literally feels like like real life penalties because their penalties kill on the field, and it feels like as um, as a watcher and as a dedicated fan that it just it just hurts, man, and it just. It just doesn't make any sense. Like, why can't everything come together the way it should on paper? Yeah. Is, is the frustrating part. But let, let's not keep killing them, man. Let's not because um, let's let's look ahead to uh, y'all's next game 
It's in Cleveland, by the way. Ravens are coming in. That awful rival of yours. MVP <laughs> candidate Lamar Jackson coming in. Uh, playing with a hurt quad still. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, I like, that stopped him. Uh, I know, right? Like, what, he had all these... He blew up on Thursday night. Yeah, what, five touchdown passes, I think? Yeah. Yeah. So. And if Eric was here, I'd be like, well, I wish we drafted Lamar Jackson. <laughs> I can hear him now. If we drafted Lamar Jackson, things would be different. You're you're right. Things would definitely be different in some would kind it, of way because it wouldn't would be it, Baker Mayfield. Would it, though? Anyways. So, um... I, I'm this y'all gonna lose. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't think y'all gonna win another game this year. Y'all gonna finish seven and nine. I feel the same about my Raiders. In case anybody wants to jump at me, my Raiders broke my heart losing their last home game. We're gonna finish that or six and ten. Y'all gonna finish seven and nine, and it's just broken hearts everywhere, all around the world here's, tonight. Here's the thing, though. We have beat them once, so I'm gonna clean on that and hang on to that. However. Since then, they've scored 30 points, 6 of 8 games. And 4 of those 8 have been over 40 points. So their offense is like been clicking ever since then. I mean, Mark That's Ingram's going... Part. Like, and we don't have that same... Sideline reporter And, and as, as already, like we keep talking about, you don't have that same defensive line, so they're going to have to find a way to make sure they contain and keep, just, keep it, so much, keep it like keep them in the pocket and keep them contained that way to make sure that the gaps are filled and things like that because if not, then they're just going to run all over again. I mean, even even in that game that we beat them in, they did run well. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be the biggest the biggest issue is stopping their, stopping Mark Ingram, start, stopping Lamar Jackson yeah, and just making sure Taking that care they of don't, business. Yeah, making sure they don't blow up. Like, they got to is going to going to test discipline, especially with the defense. It's really going to test it. Mm-hmm. And then the offense is just they got to they got to run the ball. They gotta, they gotta, run the ball gotta, more than seventeen times they, with Chubb. I don't care about like I care. It, he <laughs> like he has the second most rushing attempts in the league. You don't want to run him like fucking. Double, you don't, you don't wanna, want to run him into the ground. You don't want to run him like Demarco Murray w- with the Cowboys. What they did. To oh, him. that's right. You know, I mean, How about that. Come on. So you can't complain about Kill that. Kill him, get the yardage. You can't complain about that kind of stuff. It's the way that the the game plan and scheme works. Like it's mm-hmm. gotta, they, it's just gotta make more sense and flow. Because when you start out trying pass, 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 and then you're down because of mistakes or whatever, and then you use the run game to get back in. It's like you gotta change change it up. Start like they need to keep their offense off the field, so you might as well start with the running game yeah. and try to kill that clock as much as possible because you know your running game works just as well as theirs. No, that's a damn good running game. Yeah, so I mean But no, I I mean, yeah, you you can't kill Chubb and run him into the ground. You don't want to Demarco Murray him. I, I agree. Um I just know that works. <laughs> it works and it kills the clock and it moves the chains. But, I mean, you can't do that all game. Eventually, the Ravens yeah. will find a way to stop him, one way or another. Yeah. Yeah. But I agree with you, honestly. I do think we're going to lose this game. Yeah. But I'm going to hold out hope that somehow, some way, they are able to do what they did the first time we played them. Like, the Browns are able to do the, do what they did to contain them. So, but... I mean, That'd be nice, it'll, it'll, I, I, I think it's going to be a long shot. Yeah. Like now you're just kind of playing for pride and to spoil their hopes a little bit. There's a fan duel league, guys. <laughs> this week, four people played. <laughs> and their winner was Monster Lung, 139 points. I was right behind them, and then Gary came in third. Anthony. I came in last. Was the biggest loser this I'm week. I'm kind of blowing it. You kind of <laughs> are. I'm glad you said that. Because I was at like 90. I had like a. 100 point lead and you, now it's down to like 40. Yeah, yeah. If I remember it's 1944.98 for you and Eric has 1908.58. The, he's on a roll, so man. 36. I really thought I had it this week and I'm I'm blaming it on uh, the fact that he can do more research by sitting cuz he's sitting in his bed and stuff. And <laughs> he's on the IR. <laughs> yeah, all, exactly. All he can do is watch NFL Network exactly. and and study for uh, daily fantasy so, and season so That's what I'm blaming it on, so yeah. but I don't know. Gotta pull, I gotta pull it together these last two yeah, weeks. Yeah, man. Yeah. 
You don't want to blow it, because God, do you want to hear him? Like, I was down all season long, but I kept the champion. You want, wave it in. The, you want, yeah. I don't want to see that. No. I don't want to see that. So if you want to play FanDuel with us, the link's in the description. Uh, Two dollars to play. There's six slots. Uh, y'all could have jumped in this week if you've been, if you'd remembered. We always play the 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. games. Uh, come join us. Come try to uh, defeat our scores. And then next season, if you um, if you're playing with us, you can try to win the Browns on our Blood Intercontinental Championship belt, which this guy is barely hanging on to right now. And it's just a lot of fun. Also, this is uh, this uh. Also, Browns in Our Blood is brought to you by Monster Lung Sound Vision. That's the channel you're watching this on. Make sure you like, share, and I almost said describe. Like, share, and comment because um, we love the comments. Uh, as you can tell, Eric is still in there making comments. Anthony jumps in there. I'll just go through and read what everybody says. We love the feedback. Love to hear you guys' yes. thoughts. Even when um, we're mad and down in the Browns or whether um, we're celebrating Pro Bowl selection. So please make sure you comment. And if you hit that bell... Um, you'll never miss an upload from Monster Lung Sound Vision, including Browns in Our Blood. And if you don't like looking at our ugly mugs, that's right. You can uh, listen to the show in podcast format at hyphenpodcastgroup.com. That is a Morgantown, West Virginia-based podcast collective bringing great podcasts to the people. Hyphenpodcastgroup.com. All right, guys. That's all we got. That's it. He's not going to be here next week. Nope, I'm going to be home. He's going home to see the fam. Yep. Eric... Hopefully, we'll be back next week. That's what he's shooting for. If not, we'll figure something out. We'll figure something out so that there's an episode. Um, but right now, it looks like there will be uh, two more for the regular season. And then we're going to have a meeting and figure out what we're doing for the off season. So, uh, we're going to try to bring you all more Browns content uh, throughout the off season this off season. Yeah. So, that's Anthony Sellers. And that's Kevin Conley. And this is Browns in Our Blood. <laughs> that was. T- <laughs> Try not to part of <laughs> That's Anthony Sellers. That's Kellen Conley. And this is... Browns in our blood. <laughs> Outtakes, that's it. <laughs>